everybody. I am here in my living room talking to the beautiful Shiloh Sophia. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Shiloh's in town in Portland teaching a workshop in my studio this weekend. So honored. It's so great. And we um, we actually just met today. Her and I just make meeting. But I feel like I already feel like I've known you forever. It's a um, dynamic duo. It's trouble. It is trouble. <laughs> yeah. No, we uh, obviously have like tons of um, crossover in what we do in the world. Mm-hmm. And so we thought it would be fun just to get together and riff mm-hmm. on healing and creativity and our thoughts on all of that. So Some of our favorite favorite topics that I think yeah. we're both working with in our own lives and also in the, the classes that we teach. Yeah. I would love to take your class. I know. I want to take your class. Yeah, we need to do that. that. We should okay. do that. Yeah. <laughs> the seed has been <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like there's so much going on in the world about healing right now and so much needed uh, and yes. um, so much seeking outside of ourself for the healer. Mm-hmm. And there's so many amazing people offering healing right now. And there just feels like there's this real time of moving into what is the personal medicine that we can create for ourselves to move ourselves along. Mm -hmm. And I've seen such miraculous shifts with people working with creativity as the direct medicine to move suffering. Absolutely. Have you witnessed that as well? Absolutely. And I, so I just wrote a book called Creative Revolution that's coming out this in November. And um, the subtitle is Personal Transformation Through Brave Intuitive Painting. And just a couple of days ago, I stuck a little thing up because I'm trying to weave a few other people's stories into the book. Mm-hmm. Um, it hasn't gone to press quite yet. And so I was today reading through actually all of these stories. And mm. I mean, it's just, they're endless. There, right. there, there's so many stories of, of people who, um, like a lot of people said things like, it just it just opens up this whole new world or it's like this, this new chapter in my life, um, a real turning point. And it's big. It's big. It's, it's, it goes way beyond for some people, you know, a hobby or, or something like that. Like it really does. Um, it does, it does put the tools of whatever kind of creativity, whether it's paint or Mm -hmm. music or whatever, when we start to create, we put ourselves in the driver's seat yeah. of our own experience. Yeah. And we get to be the alchemists of that experience. Yeah. Which is why it can be really scary. <laughs> yeah, that is why it can be scary. And I think that's yeah. part of what's awesome about it is that it does take you to a scary place, yeah. which causes you to cause your own catalyzation sometimes. Absolutely. I think about um, Rumi talking about who looks out from these eyes. Mm. And the sense of when we create, we're getting to get a glimpse of the one who looks out with these eyes. So it's that inner being that we think about and are connected with and do ceremony with and pray with and be with. But if it doesn't translate into matter, we don't get the witness reflection from it. So Mm -hmm. when we're creating, we actually bring something from our internal experience out into form And then can go, wow, I didn't know that was in there. And I think that right. alone is can be really healing for people, especially if they're willing to bring to the canvas or the page um, some hidden parts of themselves that's been in pain or in shadow for a long time yeah. to, to actually, that's why we call it intentional creativity. Like, I'm going to take this story, this yeah. abuse, this grief, and I'm going to, what is the shape of that? feeling what is mm-hmm. the shape of that held within me and working with it yeah and then I and then I feel energy moves absolutely because what you know when we and with anything when we keep it suppressed and we don't talk about it and yeah. we don't let ourselves let the, the the feeling and the grief come out it's that's when the damage the damage is done I did I did yeah. a, a grief uh, ritual recently and um, the woman leading it said you know Grief is not toxic. Grief is a celebration mm. of love. Mm. And the only time that it turns toxic is when it is not released. Mm-hmm. And I think, a lo- you know, in this culture especially, mm-hmm. um, 
we aren't taught how to release it. Right. And so create, right. you know, what's the form? What the heck? Yeah. Like, what, what does that even look like? You know? Yeah. And so even the simple tools of paint, paintbrush, pen on paper, whatever it is, yeah. at least gives this, it, it gives a vehicle to right. move it out. Right. Which is tangible. Right. Which does a lot more than just talking about it. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, it moves out of conceptual into matter. Exactly. And we are we are matter beings, you know. We've yeah. incarnated into this vessel at this time, yeah. and having getting to see some perspective of it out into the world, and we then can I, I sort of think of it almost as a haptic feedback loop where you're actually seeing something that's then changing you. Mm. That's how the story I feel like can move, and mm. then this new opening appears. And if we think of I mean, we know that we exist in fields. We're, we're inside of fields now where it's everywhere. You can't see it, but we're all in there. Yeah. And fields carry all the story and all the trauma and basically stays in there until you yeah. move it. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to just even from just, you know, playtime thinking, like imagine <laughs> that we could take a story or a part of our suffering Something we wanted to heal and offer it like an like an altar, mm. like the canvas is a portal or an altar. Like I'm gonna give this impossible place within myself over to this portal or this altar, mm. and um, let it move. And I feel like it actually is moving. And in that movement, there's this opening that's actually happening in the field. Yeah. So it's also. It's real. It's, it, it's also matter, although we can't see the particle and wave there. They are creating the space. And in that space, an epiphany might occur, mm -hmm. an insight, or just a slight shift in energy yeah. where you're like, wow, I just feel a tiny bit better. Yeah. Right? I'm just remembering this. Um, the very first student I ever had, she invited me to Bali to teach her how to paint. So of course I went <laughs> and, um, we're painting for days and she's really frustrated and mm -hmm. she's having a really hard time letting go because my process is all about letting go, freeing up, letting mm -hmm. it happen, you know, not like get tightening down on, on, on what it needs to be. And, um, so it's days and days. And at this point I don't really have the experience that I have now <laughs> with how to work through that. You know, I'm just like, just, you know, <laughs> do it like this. <laughs> and, uh, and so one day we're painting together in this little studio and I realized, wow, she's been really quiet for a while. <laughs> and, uh, she, and I look over and she is in the zone, like just, and the painting that she's making is gorgeous. Mm. It's free. It's just, it's like everything just clicked. And so I was like, Oh my God. So I didn't say anything. I just let her have it, you know? And then when she was ready, she was like, I just, I get it. Found it. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. And I was like, yes. And we had this mm -hmm. whole conversation about what that ex experience felt mm -hmm. like in her body and like how she got there. And, you know, basically she was like, I just stopped thinking about it. Right. <laughs> and I let myself, I let the music take over yeah. and I, she let herself get swept into mm -hmm. it. And what I love, um, this is a woman who's still a friend of mine today, is that she has that painting hanging in her house and she says, you know, I have it right where I see it because it reminds me, mm. it captured a moment mm -hmm. where I was able to transcend my critical voice right. and I was able to get in that space where everything flowed, Right. which is obviously what she's wanting in her life, right? right? And so this painting actually is a physical representation of yeah. that experience, which I, I love that art can do that. It can, it can bring us to those yeah. It can remind us, you know? Yeah, because it, it is the visual, and since we're visual beings, we take the information in through our eyes and through our heart and can actually be moved. Yeah. Moved. And I was thinking um, when you were saying that about one of my first students who was seven years old, and she was mm -hmm. painting along, and um, she said, her mom came to pick her up, and she was like, Mommy, Mommy, I lost myself. I went away, and then I came back. And I went to this amazing place. And I remember going, oh my gosh, like she actually journeyed, you know, yeah. she went out of herself into this other place. And um, since then, you know, studying people going to that place while they're creating, it seems really similar to places that are achieved through ecstatic dance or prayer yeah. or deep meditation where you could actually lose that yeah. sort of monkey mind consciousness for a little while and yeah. enter to this other place. Yeah. 
And because of that, I work with people who um, have chronic pain who for 15 or 20 minutes forget the to pain. feel the pain. Mm. It's always like, well, is it actually happening or has it actually shifted? <laughs> right. Like what's actually going on? Cool. And if that's possible, what else is possible? Yeah. You know? That's so cool. I was just reading today. It was Jen. I don't know if you know Jennifer Loudon. Mm-hmm. She put this little post up about flow and how, you know, we're always like, I want to find the flow and right. how to find it. And so she, her blog was all about, you know, the flow is always there. Right. The flow mm-hmm. is always there. It's about remembering and then like choosing to tap into that. Right. Moving into it. Cause, yeah. cause there to the river that the Hobie yeah. elders talk about where you just have to put yourself in the middle. Yeah. Let it, let, let it, it go. Take you. Don't hold on so tight. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious and I know we're both teachers, but mm-hmm. we both are also artists, just painters. How, how has your own journey with paint been a healing process for you? Hmm. Um, I think if I go back to the art school dropout time and I went to the mountain to study with my teacher, Sue Hoya, um, when I got there, I felt like I didn't have anything to say or anything to create. Mm. And I wasn't naturally talented, like as in skill as an artist. I never was, but I was taught I was creative and that was kind of all I had to go on. (laughs) (laughs) Which is (laughs) a lot. Well, without it, I wouldn't have kept going because I didn't have talent. Yeah. And so... I remember when I finally had my first breakthrough, which was to pull an image from within, which are, I create coloring books I have for, um, well, 20 years. And they're, those first drawings where my breakthrough drawings are in my coloring book, Color of Woman. And yeah. um, when I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, it happened. Mm. And I was then immediately afraid I wasn't gonna be able to do it again. Like mm. it was just like a one off or something. Right, just And I remember walk. she was out milking the goats and I ran out there and I'm like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, it happened, it happened. And it was like this um, mother and child inside of a mother and child inside of a mother and child inside of a giant egg, which was like the giant egg of the universe. And she's like, just go do it again. And so I did another one and I was like, oh. And I felt like who I was as a being came in. Mm. So I think that was the first feeling of, of like the, the healing from you know growing up to yeah. you know, now I was like 23 at this point. Where I was like, oh my gosh, there I am. Yeah. And I don't, I remember the before me. Mm. And then the after me, which was created from these two drawings, opened me to myself. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, I could help other people do this. Like, that's so weird, that other me from a few days ago. <coughs> like, now I'm me. <laughs> but then this other thing started happening simultaneously, which was um, I started to become aware of, of suffering. Oh, other suffering in the world, sort of um, what the Buddhists would call like the an unreasonable desire to end suffering for people that you don't know. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I think I'm going to die. And now I understand why people are asleep because you can't be, you can't know what's going on, that there's babies being born and people being murdered at the same time and yeah. like hold that without kind of going crazy. It's like, yeah. how do people, no wonder people are asleep. No wonder they're <coughs> right. buying into the system and the establishment because to be awake is it's like a whole yeah. thing. And the the message that, that I felt like I received from my blessed mother was like, my cosmic mother is like, that the art would be the way to, to handle the awakening mm. and to process the suffering and that I would that I would go on to, to share it with others. And that's when I got my sacred assignment at that moment. That's I was amazing. like, oh, okay. And I had no idea what that would mean. Yeah, what does that mean? But then the people started coming and was like, okay, yeah. we need to do this. We yeah. need to help me, help my kids. We got to do this. So really it was a call, I feel like, from the world that I actually said yes to, yeah. which is to bring healing through creativity. Yeah, beautiful. So that's, and then I use it like that, like formulaic medicine, like, Dealing with this, okay. I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna. I'm gonna poetry. Paint and poetry mm-hmm. through to the next place, the next opening. And most of the time, because it is my practice, I move to the next place. Yeah. And how about for you with the healing and painting? Oh my goodness, um, so much. I would. I would. Say, well, you know, the sort of what I call my painting process is brave, intuitive painting. Yeah. And so those two words, brave yeah. and intuitive, are really core. Yeah. And I, I think so much about 
my creative process as a place to practice ways of being yeah that it like like strengthening a muscle like going to the gym you know if i spend 6 hours in my studio at my canvas starting a can- looking at a blank canvas with no idea where it's going that's mm-hmm. my rule you know we don't know where it's going mm-hmm. if we do we're getting in our way already right. i'm getting in my way already um no idea where it's going and just the willingness to like continue to listen in to my intuition and trust that voice, trust that voice over and over and over, even when it feels like kind of crazy. <laughs> That's usually what's the best stuff. Um, and then to make those brave, like my painting process um, involves a lot of changing courses, like turning the canvas upside down yeah. or like trying something on and like, d- did it work? No. Okay. Let it go. You know, there's yeah. this major letting go with the layers. And so there's such a parallel to life off the canvas in mm-hmm. that if I'm practicing being that way for seven, six hours, whatever it is, I walk out into the world, I'm changed. Right. I'm more brave. Right. I'm more spontaneous. I'm more in touch with my intuition because I've been practicing all day long. Right. In a place that is totally safe. It's just paint on a canvas, you know, but it's those, it's the same parts of my brain and my heart that are learning that it's okay to be those ways yeah you know and so i'm really just fascinated with the parallels Mm -hmm. in in how the process can really um shift how we are in the world yeah 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 so lots of that it's I, i feel like i've lived my life um in a way that is really brave and intuitive. I've done lots Clearly. of wild, crazy, <laughs> brave a, things. Choosing to be an artist, you know, and, and to do it professionally and to teach and to sell paintings is like the most ridiculous, brave. brave thing. And it's for true. us to actually like have it work, yeah, you know, where we're loving our lives and then yeah. also encouraging others to be creative, I think is such a gift. So I just feel super grateful to be alive on the planet at the same time that you are mm-hmm. and our Thank other you. sisters, Chris Seidel and yeah. Pixie and just people who are like really doing this. Like there's yeah. such a movement of, of this happening right now. And I feel like it's totally. causing a waking up. It is. And it's, and we live in a time where we have the channels to reach people. I'm so grateful of that. Like even when I started painting was before the internet, you right. know? And so now it's like, wow, I never ever could have seen how this it has all unfolded, you know, right. when I put my first e-course out and suddenly have people from all over the world painting along with me and listening and, and interacting with each other and yeah. this community is forming. It's just like, oh my gosh, that was such, that was such an awakening for me to right. realize, wow, this is a, this is a whole new world yeah. that we're in. And, and it's a really exciting time to be alive. It, it is. really is. The quantum the, the, the quantum world that is able to happen because of the internet um it has its blessings and challenges it it does it does well we were talking earlier about your live streaming and how yeah you do things live and you know that people are actually connecting in that moment with each other and with you and reporting healings of you know whatever it is that they're bringing you know it's like this thought of bringing where you are in your story into that moment and being with it in a new way and yeah. allowing it to change itself and then allowing the image that happens to change you. Mm-hmm. We call that the witness process where you're yeah. you're the witness of your own discovery. And what's so great about people who are beginner painters is they can't dominate it. Yes. Right? So the more skill you get, like you at a certain point I you have to know. get more and more and more brave because you can then dominate an outcome. Exactly. But beginners, that's those first it's few paintings are just like, whoa, I know. like whatever comes. <laughs> I always tell my first time students like, oh, oh you so are, lucky. yeah, this is great. You have nothing to unlearn. You have nothing to fight against. You're just, just fresh and open. And it's so great. It is. So for anyone out there who has never, ever painted before. This is your chance. This is your time. <laughs> you get to experience it for the first time and maybe you'll get hooked. <laughs> We did. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for having me so over. Yeah, it's so fun. We could talk for, for, for hours, I'm sure. But um, thanks for checking this out and joining us as we chat about life yeah. and art and healing. And maybe you can get inspired and go get a canvas or a piece of paper right now and bring something that yeah. you're struggling with or suffering from or an old story, something that's holding you back, and just do some doodling yeah. or painting around it. Just see what that's like, just like with intention, just to... To see it and to measure, like sort of, yeah. how do you feel before? Where is it? 
you know, where are you stuck? And then go, wow, how do I feel mm. after? And it's measuring tough. it. I think it's, it's cool because you realize that there's a change yeah. and then that change is evidence and that evidence inspires you to try it Keep again. Keep going, right. Yeah. yeah. It will be time well spent, we promise. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.